the most important thing is look at your mission. What is God giving you as a mission? One, to be a medical missionary. It's not to be left to committees, but you individually, God has asked you, whether you're sitting here or you're sitting over in, in Africa or in India or wherever you're watching today, God has asked you to be a medical missionary. Good afternoon. Isn't it beautiful out there? Boy, again, I went outside right before and took a deep breath. And, you know, you just don't do that down in the city. Good fresh air. Oh. I was um, sitting talking with a gentleman who had type 2 diabetes and his wife. And I was sitting there in the chair and we were working through the plan that this gentleman needed to do to address his type 2 diabetes and also he had hypertension. And Mary Lou came over, she was over here, and she came over and she got me. And she normally doesn't come and get me when I'm involved with somebody, helping someone. She says, I need your help. So I knew it must be serious. So I got up and I walked across and there was a lady over here and she was crying. And I asked, what's wrong? And she says, my husband is very sick. And um, the doctor says he's a 10 of 10 in severity. I don't know what that level was measured from, but it was a 10 of 10 in severity. And uh, he, he's going to die. And she says, I just came from the pharmacy, and they said that every drug had been used to, uh, to address this situation. They said there's no more drugs. To, to be used, and they say, go across the street and see if Walt can help you. And so she was there. Her husband had a con How many of y'all have heard of MRSA? Well, when a person has MRSA, you use a drug called vancomycin, or at least we used to when I worked in healthcare. So he ha this gentleman had VRE, which is vancomycin, res vancomycin resistant. It's a staph infection that's resistant to methicillin antibiotics and resistant to vancomycin. And they tried everything. And his severity was 10 of 10, according to the um, physician. She says, please, and she's crying, help my husband. I said, does your husband believe in God? She goes, nope. Uh, I said, uh, I, I have something. I've never used it for this before. But if there's any healing, it's going to be God that's going to heal your husband. Are you willing to try it? She says, I'm willing to try anything. I want my husband to live. So I went and got it and I brought it back over and Mary Lou was there and I was there and, and I said, do you mind if we pray with you that God will bless this and, and heal your husband? She says, I don't care. I want my husband to live. So both I prayed, Mary Lou prayed, and the lady left. She um, came back a week later, smiling, all happy. And she says, my husband is much better. He's a 4 out of 10 in severity. He had dropped from a 10 out of 10 to a 4 out of 10. And again, I don't know the measurement tool he was using, but he's much better. And she's gone again. Two weeks later, two weeks later, she comes back in and she says, all happy. She says, my husband is totally healed. There's no infection. It's, it's totally gone. And my husband believes in God. And she left. And I didn't hear anything else out from her until last year. Last year, I was standing by the herb cabinet and I was doing some work. We've got a big old herb cabinet that, oh, almost as big, well, probably almost as half the size of that, that screen that we get herbs for folks. And um, I was there working at the herb cabinet and this lady comes up and she says, can you give me a, a recipe of something that would help my husband? He needs to quit sm smoking. Something would help him with that. Do you have anything? I said, sure. And she has pen and paper. And, and I said, you want to use um, a th three-fourths of a cup of lemon juice, a fourth of a cup of honey, and a third of a teaspoon of peppermint essential oil. She says, I got it. 
And she starts heading out the door. And I said, but wait a minute. As she's heading out the door, I said, don't forget the most important part. As she sticks her head back in, she says, is it the honey or the lemon juice or the peppermint? I said, prayer. Don't forget to pray. And she says, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no, ma'am. And so she comes back in and she says, she starts to tell the story and I remembered. It was this lady who had come in years ago. Now, this is last year, so we're looking at probably over 10 years, 10, 11 years ago this happened. She comes back in. She's, and I said, ma'am, i got several questions for you. She, I said, did it ever come back? Did the VRE ever come back? She goes, it never came back. I said, so your husband's doing well. She says, yes, he's doing great. No problems. I said, I got another question. Does your husband still believe in God? She says, oh, yes, with this huge smile. I said, I have a third question. You left before I could even ask you before. Do you believe in God? And she says, oh, yes, and with even a bigger smile. And she says, it all happened right here. And she was standing exactly where she had been years before. All happened right here. I said, so what are you all doing? She says, oh, we're very involved in the Lincoln Baptist uh, 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 church and she said it's great we're doing very well now I don't know what God has in plan for them but if God can take them from both of them not at all believing in God total atheist and they're very involved as Christians today I think God has big things planned for those folks today I'd like to speak on something that uh, is a powerful subject God's prescription. Does God have a prescription? I will tell you that this prescription is different than the way I was trained. I will tell you that Mary Lou and I had a big argument driving through New York City over this topic soon after we got married. See, Mary Lou had acute myelocytic leukemia when she was 15. For a year and a half, she was on chemotherapy. And then, boom, one day, God just plumb healed her. But as we were driving through New York City on the way up to the Adirondacks, she, we were talking. She says, I'll never do chemotherapy again. And I said, no, you will. I'm your husband. You're my wife. I, won't, I don't want you to die. Yes, you'll do chemotherapy if something happens. If you get cancer again, she says, no, I won't. Well, we argued for a while. 10, 11 years ago, Mary Lou got cancer again. Fortunately, I had left allopathic health care. And so I was on the same track as she was, and she's still sitting with us here today. No cancer. It's been gone for 10 years. So I'm going to share some things today that may shake you up a little bit. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your patience with us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for healing, such as you did on this man who had no hope at all under allopathic health care. Everything had been thrown at him. Nothing. And a simple herb like garlic. You used it. And this man's still alive today and very strong Christian. And his wife. Lord, transform our hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to share with you all a quick little video. Let's see if it works here. There once was a town called Allopath. It had many people, streets, and cars. But due to budget limitations, there were no stop signs. We just keep going. Whoa. Pedal to the metal. Not surprisingly, traffic accidents were common. What? Cars would crash into each other at nearly every intersection. Did I do that? Oh boy. As the population of Allopath grew, traffic accidents increased to an alarming level. <laughs> I've been in another accident. That's three today. Out of desperation, the city council hired Dr. West, the doctor of the motor division, MD, to find a solution. Uh -huh. Dr. West spent days examining traffic accidents on an hourly rate. I see. I see. It looks lucrative. Must analyze. The townspeople of Allopath watched on with great curiosity while Dr. West went about his work. This guy's good. What's he doing? 
After weeks of investigations, Dr. West called the people of Allopath to a town meeting for release of his report. Here it is. Traffic accidents are caused by skid marks. I have found and documented a near 100% correlation between traffic accidents and skid marks. Oh. This town has skid marks disease. Why didn't I think of that? I could have thought of it with my brain. Yeah. Thank you, thank it's you. It's amazing. Colossal, stupendous, fantastic, yeah. and he's good, too. The city paid Dr. West his consulting fee, then asked the good doctor to propose a method for treating this skid marks disease. I recommend a particular chemical coating, Teflon. 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 Oh, no, no, no. Teflon. The city immediately placed a large order with the chemical company that manufactured rhodoceuticals. Within weeks, the streets were completely coated and the skid marks all but disappeared. But things weren't well in the whole Traffic accidents were brutal. Hospital beds were overflowing with injured residents. The town economic advisor, observing the sharp increase in economic activity, announced that Allopath was booming. Times are good. Things are great, except that we're getting creamed. But the traffic accidents continued to increase. And yet, there were no signals. Not again. It keeps happening. I thought we had this figured out. we got to get to the bottom of this. Well, the city council was baffled. They thought they had solved this problem. You said it! They called a town meeting, and following a short discussion of the problem... Hey, who's that old guy? An old hermit who lived in the forest just outside Allopath addressed the, the town guy? people. Who's that old guy? There's no such thing as skid marks disease. No skid marks disease? Outrageous! This disease was invented by the Rotoceuticals Company to sell you Teflon coatings. That's crazy talk! This is a simple problem. All we need to do is build stop signs and traffic lights. Then the traffic accidents will cease. Crazy. You must take up the Teflon. That's a lunatic. He's a nut. A big nut. Hey, Pastor Quack. The townspeople were horrified to hear such a statement. Personally, Personally I'm, I'm horrified, horrified to hear, to hear such, such a statement. statement. They knew Skid Mark's disease existed. Dr. West had told them so. But what may happen if stop signs actually work? How will that affect our booming economy in Allopath? It was at that moment that most of the townspeople realized their own jobs were at stake. If stop signs were built, nearly everyone would be unemployed. Yeah, what about them? We'll all lose our livelihood! They all had jobs in emergency response services, car repair shops, hospitals, and Teflon coating maintenance. It was important that everyone continue to believe that skid marks disease was the cause of the accidents. Out of fear of losing this economic prosperity, the townspeople voted to create a new public safety agency, the Frequent Drivers Association. The FDA's board members were chosen from among the business leaders of the community. The owner of the car shop, the owner of the ambulance company, and, of course, Dr. West. <laughs> Soon after its inception, the FDA announced that skid marks disease was indeed very real. Skid marks are You better promote stop signs are quiet. Stay the course. This pleased the townspeople of Allopath. With the FDA, they knew their jobs were safe. Stop signs. They still had a lot of traffic accidents, but at least their jobs were secure. And so life continued in Allopath. For a short while, at least. As traffic accidents continued at a devastating rate, more and more residents of Allopath were injured. Many were left unable to work due to their injury. Oh. In time, population dwindled. The once booming town of Allopath eventually became little more than a ghost town. No one was any healthier or happier or longer lived. And the hermit? He outlived every single resident of Allopath. In his spare time, he constructed stop signs, waiting for the next population to come along and hoping they might listen to an old hermit with a crazy idea. And that so-called crazy idea is simply this. The mere treatment of symptoms is not the answer. When it comes to your health and well-being, looking and feeling younger, avoiding diseases, increasing your energy, and living a long and fulfilling life, prevention and real cure are the only real answer. Would you agree?
Hi YouTube, I'm Walter Feit from Amazing Discoveries. If you'd like to learn more or you would like to subscribe, then click visit our webpage, donate, share and we would like to hear from you.